Hello, welcome back. So this is the video on norming. So if you remember in our stages, forming, storming, norming. So in order to go from storming to norming, what that really means is you're gonna build some agreed upon norms. And in this video, what we're gonna be talking about is building a family social contract. So hopefully you have a family member with you right now watching the video. If you don't, please pause the video right now and go get a family member or two or maybe even the whole family because this is a process that's really much more effective with some family support. All right, so now that you have family members, welcome family members. We wanna start by going through the steps of how to create a social contract. So the first step in creating a social contract is just to start thinking and maybe lightly talking about how do you want to be treated? How do you think other people in the family want to be treated? And really, how do you want to treat each other when there is a problem? The second step is for each person in the family to create three norms that they think would be really good for the family social contract. The norms are not rules, they're more like how we want to be treated and how we treat each other. All right, so after you create your three norms and everybody has them, then you're gonna go around the table and in step three, everybody is gonna lobby for their norms. They're gonna sell the reasons for their norm, why they thought this one was important to the people at the table. After you're done lobbying, one person will write all the norms on a single sheet of paper. You kind of want to mix them up so it's not really easy to see where each norm came from and write them down on a single sheet of paper and then you're going to pass the paper around and people are going to vote. Now every family member gets to vote for four norms, but they cannot vote for any norm that they created. So they're going to vote for other people's norms and they get to vote for four. This mixes up the votes and it gives a, a, a range of votes so you can see which norms get the most votes and which norms get the fewest votes, which is the next step. After you're done with the voting stage, then you're going to tally up the votes and see which norms have the most number of votes. And once you do that, then we make sure that those, of course, are going to get underlined and put on the social contract. Then the real question becomes starting with the ones that got um, some votes but not many, you're gonna go up from the least votes up to the top votes and you're gonna just say, what do you think about this one? Does this one needs to be on the contract? And have a little discussion about it. So you're gonna come up with those norms and then write them out on the paper. As you get ready to write them out on the paper, it helps to have a discussion about making them a little bit more specific rather than broad so people can really understand what that norm really means. And then once you're done with writing them out on the paper, the last step is you're going to ratify it or sign the social contract saying, I can agree to this. Once you have that established, then you just set that up somewhere in the house where people can see it or you can reference it later. And after we've created these norms, the person who's responsible for keeping these norms in place is not one person, but rather all people. It's a communal agreement. And so a system that I've been using in schools and in districts all over the country, and even with lots of families, is something called fouls. And the way foul works is anyone in the family can call foul. When somebody feels like they have been offended or they feel like somebody has really violated something that was a norm, they can call foul. And if somebody calls a foul, it's a foul because only I can say whether or not someone hurt my feelings. And so when somebody calls foul, the first thing you do is you say, sorry, and then you wanna say two nice things. Why two nice things? Because you made that relationship withdrawal and you wanna do two quick deposits to try to get that relationship back to even or even better. At least one of the deposits has to be about you as a person. So I might say, I really like that blue shirt, that man up shirt that you've got, but I also need to say something like, I really appreciate how caring you have been in this last week when I've been stressed. Those kinds of things, those quick little deposits, help bring the relationship back up to more balance and can be really helpful in challenging spots. So now you've talked about a social contract, you've talked about fouls, so please, right now, that's your assignment. Get started, create a family social contract, and hopefully you can get everybody involved, and if you can't, maybe create a family social contract that you wish you could get everybody involved for. All right, take care.